Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, November 17th, 2022 to order. The time is now 7.02 p.m. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the meetings are as always recorded for audio and video and will be posted on YouTube. Uh, we ask that you please silence your cell phones to avoid disturbing the meetings. Masks and hand sanitizers are available at the front of the room for anyone interested. Uh, tonight, we are having a public hearing around the LERTA or L-E-R-T-A and Dutch Valley Food Distributors. Um, I'll be turning that over in just a few moments uh, for that. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to get a couple of housekeeping items out of the way, like the approval of the minutes. Uh, the first uh, approval of minutes is for October 27th. Wait, wait, wait. Peter, Peter, yeah. Peter, yes. Wait. I Peter. think the hearing needs to be yeah. first. Oh, the hearing has to be first. Oh, I apologize. Okay, thank you. So in that case, I will turn it over to our solicitor for the proper order of operations. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. So again, my, my name is Colin McFarland. I'm one of the assistant solicitors for the township. Uh, before the general business meeting tonight, we do have a hearing on the local economic uh, tax revitalization act, also known as LERDA. Um, just by way of some background, LERDA uh, provides the property owners of some industrial commercial properties uh, with uh, tax breaks when they're improving those properties. Um, this, this hearing tonight was prompted by uh, Dutch Valley, which uh, is seeking um, those temporary tax breaks under LERDA. Um, they are proposing to improve uh, their uh, processing facility um, at their properties in the township. Um, if the township agrees that uh, their application is proper after tonight's hearing, then they may uh, enact an ordinance uh, providing Dutch Valley Foods with that temporary tax break. Uh, before taking uh, public comments on tonight's hearing, I do have a couple administrative matters to address first. Um, first, uh, as you'll notice, Ms. Delks is here as a stenographer. To the extent that anyone has public comments, I would ask that you please speak one at a time. Uh, second, I know that uh, Dutch Valley has counsel here tonight. Mr. Horseman, would you like to enter your appearance of record? Sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vicki Horseman. I'm an attorney with Vicki East Falls and Mary. And I'm a third and I represent Dutch Valley. Thanks, Mr. Horseman. Uh, third, I would note for the record that uh, the Board of Supervisors is to be convened here tonight. Two members are in person and one is attending online virtually. And finally, I do have some exhibits to enter into the record. Exhibit one is the joint, joint notice of hearing and notice of potential enactment of ordinance as prepared by my office. The second exhibit is the proof of publication of that notice, uh, depicting that it was published in the Reading Eagle on November 1st and November 8th. Exhibit three is an affidavit by the township secretary attesting that she has posted or, or did post that notice at this office on November 3rd. Exhibit four, is an affidavit by the township zoning officer attesting that he posted the notice uh, at the subject parcels uh, earlier this month. Exhibit five is the site plan submitted by Dutch Valley Foods with its LERDA application. And finally, exhibit six is the proposed ordinance that the board may enact uh, if they find uh, LERDA's application appropriate. Before I open the floor to public comment, um, I did want to give uh, the chance for Mr. Horseman or a representative of Dutch Foods uh, to make a, a comment or a statement on their application tonight. All right. Good evening again, everyone. Uh, just a brief, uh, as we understand that the voter statute, uh, the purpose of the hearing is to provide the opportunity to provide uh, public input on the boundaries of the LERDA designation. Um, what we request tonight is that the LERDA boundaries be set based on the two properties that we uh, submitted 
that were posted in uh, the people the map that's included in the exhibits that uh, Terry McFarland did uh, reference. Um, we don't have any further to add, further to add about that, but you know, if there are public, you know, public comments or questions, we're happy to provide further. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Workman. Uh, now we'll open up the, the floor to public comment. Does, do any members of the public um, provide to, want to provide any input on this Florida application? All right, let the, reflect, let the record reflect that no public comments were offered here tonight. Uh, with that being said, uh, this hearing is now closed and the board will consider enacting um, an ordinance uh, providing Dutch Valley with that temporary tax break, uh, if it so chooses. Thank you. And now we can convene with tonight's uh, general business meeting. Okay, thank you, Colin. Um, is there anything that we need to do uh, before we move into the, the main items in terms of the adoption of that ordinance? No, Peter, you, you can adopt the ordinance um, as it arises on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay, so before we move into the main items for agenda then, the approval of the minutes is outstanding for October 27th, 2022. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jim, aye. Okay. The minutes for the November 12th workshop meeting are not yet completed, so we're going to table that motion until the December workshop meeting. Uh, next item is the treasurer's report. Uh, Irene, do you have anything that you would like to report? Uh, just one item. Uh, our Comcast bill had gone up a little bit uh, over the past two months. I contacted them uh, this past week, and I was able to renegotiate our contract as it pertains to us with just usage in the office, the internet, uh, all that other stuff. And I was able to uh, lock in a lower rate. So we're saving about $25 a month now. Excellent. They sent us an updated um, uh, agreement. So that's in place until October of 2024. I'm going to calendar that so that it's uh, there's kind of a reminder to make sure that we stay on top of it. Okay, very good. I believe the existing, had you not renegotiated, the existing was up in like March or April of next year? No, they said it expired in uh, August. It's weird because we did we did billing changes last spring. I don't know. Whoever yeah. I it expired because it went up by about 37 or $38. Okay. And, uh, so when I called them up, they said, no, let's lock you into this better rate. So nothing really changed. It, it, they... They always allege they're going to increase our uh, speed, and I think that's a promise that they always make, and that never happens. So, either that or it's just not noticeable. But right. Uh, right. either way, well done. Saving money is always a good thing. I try every time I can. Okay. So uh, the next item is to approve the payment of bills for November. I'll make a motion to approve the payment. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Anyone wishing to address the board uh, can do so by coming up. Uh, when you do, please speak clearly directly towards the microphone. Uh, be sure to state your name and address and to sign in on the public comment sheet. There's no one currently signed in. Okay. Uh, we do not have anybody else on the Zoom. So uh, at this time, seeing no public comments, we'll move into the main items for discussion. Uh, first item for discussion is the proposed LERDA ordinance. Um, having read through this, the, the only question I have is about the exemption schedule. Just as a clarifying point, uh, Colin, that exemption is for the, the change in real estate property tax based on the improvements, correct? Not a total exemption. Correct. Okay. And then the first year, just for everyone that does not have this in front of them, the first year would be a 100% exemption from the change in uh, real estate tax that was done based on the improvements. The second year would be 90, third year would be 80, and so on until the 10th year, it was 10%. After the 10th year, it would return to the normal level of real estate tax. Irene or Jim, do either of you have any concerns or reservations around that? No, we welcome Dutch Valley as a business in our uh, community and we look forward to have their continued presence. 
I agree. I, I think they're a valued portion of the community and I'm glad we have them. So uh, if this is something we can do to, to help foster that relationship and help them grow their business, I'm, I'm all for it. So uh, Sue, or what ordinance number are we up to? Is it uh, three or four? It is five. Five, okay. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt the proposed LERDA ordinance as ordinance 2022-5. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Dutch Valley Food Distributors Incorporated letter of credit. The request has been made by Dutch Valley Food Distributors to release the letter of credit uh, in an amount of $1,817,808.80 with an amount to be retained of $22,627.50. The original letter of credit was in an amount of $1,840,436.30 based on the November 15th site inspection of the current improvements constructed. McCarthy Engineering recommended release number one of the letter of credit in the amount of $1,493,920.86, with the amount to be retained of $346,515. There are three remaining items to be completed on the as-built, which needs to be submitted, approved, and recorded, along with the NPDES permit. Uh, those things have to be completed. Uh, which is 15% of the total cost, totaling $276,065.45, which is held at an 18-month maintenance bond. So the, the request, just to summarize that, um, is to release the, the $1.8 million on the, the letter of credit, and McCarthy Engineering recommended the release of one4 Um I think what we would want to action tonight is the the off the inspected release of the one point four million dollars, um, and then we can always release the remainder based on the uh, as built completion along with that NPDES permit. So I'll make a motion to authorize the release of the one million four hundred ninety three dollars nine hundred. Excuse me, one million four hundred ninety three nine hundred twenty point eight six. Um, on the letter of credit for Dutch Valley Foods. You want to also include the amount to be retained. Oh, okay, thank you. The amount to be retained is $346,515.44. And thank you, Sue. Sure. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the CWP-LD on 37 Main Street. These are the self-storage units. We are still waiting for the property owner to assign the improvements agreement and the stormwater agreement and provide the financial surety and letter of credit. Uh, until those things happen, there's really nothing to do. It's in kind of a holding state at that point. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, our SEO is continuing to do the inspections in the Northwest District. We were notified on November 1st that our application for the local share or LSA grant was being reviewed and that the legal fees uh, are considered administrative and cannot exceed 2% of the grant request. A re new resolution is not needed to change the legal fee amount as long as the grant amount does not exceed am the amount on the resolution uh, that was adopted, which was 524,000. After some discussions with Andy, Kimberly, and Joe, they reworked some numbers and submitted a revised Exhibit 2, Opinion of Probable Costs, and a revised Project Budget. Joe and Andy have been in contact uh, with the DEP also about revising our Act 537 implementation schedule. Uh, Joe had sent an email that had some revised timeframes. Uh, we went over them at the workshop. They seemed to be in order. Uh, the only one that I had concerns about was the uh, submitting grants for the actual project construction portion. Um, we may want to give ourselves a little extra time there because it's only a span of about six months. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll quickly go through those timelines again. That way, everybody that's either watching this on uh, YouTube uh, or in the audience there has the awareness of, of what the milestones proposed uh, to be amended are. So the first one would be the securing of grants and financing specifically for the project design. And that would be com for completion by May 2023. 
The next would be to prepare the design and have that ready by November, 2023. Then apply for permits by December, 2023. Obtain the permitting required for the project by July, 2024. Submit grants and financing uh, for the project construction itself by October 2024 and secure those grants and financing by April 2025. Uh, we would then advertise for construction bids by June 2025 and award contracts for construction by October 2025. Um, as I indicated earlier, the only concern that I have is around the submission and the securing of the grants for the actual construction. Um, I may be a pessimist here, but I'm concerned that six months may not be sufficient for the kind of uh, grants that we're looking to secure. So I'll have a conversation with Joe and see if that's uh, just me being, again, a pessimist or if that's something that we would potentially be able to extend a slight bit to give us more time in case we did not get the kind of grant funding that we're looking for. Um, there will be an EDU analysis performed on the project parcels and the conceptual uh, around the conceptual low pressure sewer design uh, to see if that is a more cost effective approach, uh, even if we do a, a mix of low pressure and gravity. Uh, to see if that can drive that uh, more recent $10 million price tag that we had gotten on the today's dollars figure from McCarthy Engineering down. Um, the only other update is that Andy did meet with the WSA engineer, Kevin Conrad, and their solicitor, along with Colin, to discuss the revisions to the intermunicipal agreement. And uh, there, I believe, Colin, you are you currently working on the revisions? Yes, I am, Peter. And they were... Uh... WSA's council was open to at least some of our proposed amendments to that existing agreement. So it, it is in red line format, um, and Andy and I will be submitting it to WSA's council for his review. Okay, very good. Uh, Irene or Jim, do either of you have any concerns? No, if anything, I feel very confident. I mean, Kimberly's done a fantastic job with getting all the grants that we'd be eligible for now. So yeah, I understand your, your concern, but uh, they're just a pretty well put together group. So I feel yeah. very comfortable with what they've suggested so far. Yeah, overall, uh, I'm comfortable with it. And it might just be me, again, being kind of pessimistic around the, the time frames of things. It seems a little aggressive. Uh, but I, I may be able to uh, put some of those fears to rest after I talk to, to Kim or to Joe. So uh, if we have no nothing further on the Act 537, I'll move on to the next item, which is the Creekview Dairy Operations at 952 Route 419. Uh, according to their improvement and maintenance agreement dated 2-23-17, uh, they were set to complete all their stormwater and improvements within 18 months or by no later than 7-23-18. Their letter of credit is being held and auto increasing yearly. The township engineer, secretary, and roadmaster, along with the property owner, his excavator, and Jason Rickards from the BCCD, met on site on November 4th to review the swales that were installed in lieu of a pipe and some other stormwater deficiencies. Uh, we are expecting a report from our engineer and from Jason Rickards uh, in regards to uh, suitability as a replacement and also about their NPDES permit. Um, I'm not sure if that was, for, we're waiting on that from McCarthy Engineering or if we're waiting on that from Chuck, but. Peter, I can I can chime in here. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I was out on site uh, with township staff and the, the owner and everyone else that was mentioned there. And Yes, a report is is due from Lancaster, or excuse me, from the Berks County Conservation District regarding their requirements to close out the NPDES permit. Um, I included in in the engineer's report that I know you got late today, I believe, um, on page three, um, basically identified you know the meeting that we just had, and on page four, um, it gave you some information regarding that change to eliminate. Uh, two inlets and pipe, and in, in lieu of that, a swale was installed. Um, when we were out on site, both the conservation district and I looked at that, and I provided a photo for you. Um, that, that swale certainly seems functional. Um, 
and is stabilized. Uh, so I'd say it's performing well. And I really don't understand why the inlets and pipe were there to begin with. But that being said, um, it was shown on the approved land development plan. So I think, you know, a construction modification like that does come up from time to time. You know, ideally the applicant would either uh, present that to the engineer first uh, um, and then I'm not sure how you folks like to operate. Sometimes the engineer makes the call. Um, but in this case, uh, I put it in the report and I identified it as potentially, you know, board action to consider either acknowledging or outright approving uh, this construction modification. Um, once that's done, then I'm going to, you know, finish my report and provide direction to the applicant's engineer. To finish up the as-built plans, we're going to identify a few construction, minor construction things that need to occur yet, and that after he submits um, the as-built plans, he can also, and completes that con uh, minor construction work, he should submit a written request for the release of his letter of credit, because to date, it's only kind of been verbal. Um, so that should be submitted in writing. And upon that happening, I think we'll, we'll be ready to close this project out. Um, the one other component there, which is kind of independent, but I'd, I'd like to see it done before the township releases all the funds, is, is the close out of the NPDES permit. Which obviously the applicant's working on that too. So the only thing I really have for that is either the board's acknowledgement um, or if you feel necessary to approve the construction modification. Uh, that deviated from the improvements shown on the approved land development plan. I'm of the mind, and, and this is a, a, a question for Jim and Irene, I'm of the mind that if the engineer okays the modifications, I don't think that we necessarily have to take an action. We we have you as the engineer for a reason. So if you look at it and say that it, it passes the, the, the right level of scrutiny from a functional standpoint, um, None of us are engineers, so other than having maybe a question or a concern, uh, we'll, we'll be trusting in your judgment on that. Okay, appreciate that. And, and I think that is appropriate, um, you know, just acknowledging that change and anything that would happen, you know, down the road on other projects, what have you. That, that's how I'll deal with it and certainly include it in my report to the board so that you're aware of the change. And ultimately, that change really does get documented in the as build plan. Um, for the project. So I think that makes sense. I, I will also note too, there's, uh, there were two barns. One uh, was identified as a proposed calf barn that has not been constructed yet. And a portion, the majority of the, the proposed heifer barn has not been constructed yet. Um, the owner is, is anticipating building that. The site has been graded out to accommodate those buildings. Um, so at some time in the future, uh, I would think, you know, building permits are an issue for the ag buildings, but, uh, you know, even make application for a zoning permit, and, um, as long as everything was still intact the way it was set up, uh, then you could proceed with the completion of those barns. Okay. Okay. And that's it on that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else that we want to cover on that, Jim and Irene, or should I move on to the next no, item? No, no. No, thank you for expressing our sentiments quite so uh, precisely. Thank you. Okay, next is the road projects for 2023, uh, primarily the culverts. Uh, Monarch needs to know when we would like the delivery of the box culvert for Reichert Road. Uh, Ryan Allgaier's opinion is if we know that uh, when it'll be manufactured and ready delivery, we can then schedule the rest of the work around that date. Uh, he's working on getting some prices to run a crane, so I would say we just need to figure out uh, with Monarch when best fits and when we can based on uh, when we're allowed to do that work based on, I know there are certain windows of the year that we're allowed to do that and certain windows of the year that we're not. Um, so we'll, we'll have to discuss that further as a, a group along with Butch, the Roadmaster. The... Specifically about the culvert projects as a whole, um, what I'm I'm going to work on doing is talking to McCarthy Engineering about transitioning the culvert projects to um, systems design so that we have a, a smooth handoff 
as we go into the new year of those projects. Um, if there's anything, Chuck, that you need to make that a reality, let me know. I know you're you're able and willing to work with McCarthy Engineering on the handoff, and McCarthy Engineering has already expressed a willingness uh, to work on a smooth handoff for this and any other projects that we have that are actively in, in flight. So we'll we'll work on getting that done. But I, I personally am excited to finally get the the first culvert going on that out of the the group that we have. Um, it's long overdue. And we've hit a, a point with a lot of these where they're they're actually legitimately falling apart. So, yep, ready to ready to jump in um, when needed. You okay. bet. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, next is about the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, McCarthy Engineering was out and did a site survey. The PA one call was also done. There is a gas line that runs along the east side of Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Mangat Dentistry had given us a sum of $5,325 for stormwater improvements back in 2019. Um, 2014. Jim 20, uh, 2014, thank you. I apologize, I misread that. Uh, Jim McCarthy would like to meet on site uh, with myself and somebody else from the township so that everybody's on the same page. Uh, I'll be working on getting that scheduled so that I can go out and take a look at that with Jim. Unfortunately, I have been ill the past week. And it was not a not a reality to go out and do that. Um, the proposed uh, storm sewer would extend from Main Street uh, to the house at the alley at Marion Drive, and would resolve a a long standing uh, stormwater runoff situation that has plagued a couple of the houses uh, along that 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 road. Um, I know we had discussed this very briefly, Butch and I, that there are concerns about hitting that gas line. Uh, Chuck, that might be something that we want to look at with you if you're able to go out on site alongside Jim McCarthy and discuss as a group. Uh, if there's a, an easy way of relocating that to the opposite side or somewhere where uh, Butch or one of the other members of the road crew doesn't have to worry about uh, disturbing that gas line with the backhoe. Yeah, that, that would probably be wise if it's in close proximity. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we got a proposal from the Cohen Law Group about negotiating the new contract. Their fee is $10,500, but they would be giving us a 15% discount, bringing the total down to $8,925. Uh, we would need a motion to sign their engagement letter. Uh, this was discussed a little bit at the, the workshop meeting where... Uh, it's a it's a considerable amount of money. Eight thousand, well, basically nine thousand dollars, is a considerable sum. But we get uh, and uh, Irene, keep me honest. It's about fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars that we get annually from Comcast as part of this agreement. Yeah, this year was about fifteen, and every year it's gone up incrementally. So I, I, last year was about twelve thousand. So it seems to be growing steadily. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a kickback, I'll say, based on um, what services people in the area have with Comcast. It is purely driven by subscriptions to Comcast and nothing else. So if people have more uh, services or, or packages or more expensive packages with Comcast, the greater the percentage is that comes back to us. Um, it is a, a pretty specific and very unique area of, of contract negotiation. Um, it's not something that I or, or Jim or Irene have any expertise in or and, and Colin, this came as a recommendation from Andy because of the specific nature of this. Um, it may be worth spending that money based on the fact that the Comcast agreement is a 10 year agreement. So as long as we were able to get more than the, the $900 a year increase on that, uh, it would be in my mind, well worth the money to, to spend on that. I know, Jim, you've been vocal about the, the overall cost, it being a high upfront cost. Um, have you have you thought about that further, or do you still think it's not a, a wise decision to go that route? Or I, I, My personal opinion is that we have to put eight, almost $9,000 out up front to recover over 10 years, and I'm not sure that cable's going to be around in 10 years. There's a lot of technology changes that are happening. Uh, I've been reading about Amazon and some other people that are working on changing the whole system. And I'm not even sure that 
Comcast will be around in 10 years. Uh, well, I really we, think we, we should sit down with Comcast and have negotiated with them directly to see if they would give us even a five or, you know, a small increase without having to use an attorney. Yeah. And just for, for understanding it, not everything is just the, the cable TV portion of it, but this does include things like the, the internet. Um, it does not include things like their, their wireless services that they have through Xfinity, like mobile or anything like that. Uh, but it would consist of the, the internet and the television services. Um, right. And, and the reason, one of the reasons that we suggested. Once Verizon, once Verizon opens up in our area, a lot of us will change. Yeah, because and that's that, like we just found out this week. You just mentioned that we're taking a thirty-five dollar increase with Comcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if somebody comes out with something that's less cost, most of us will move. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been waiting for fiber in the area. Yes. We we yes. simply don't have the infrastructure out here. I would I would love to have a fiber connection out here, but it's just simply not stretched. Yeah. And I lived in a more remote area of Robisonia for 10 years, and uh, we always heard that uh, Verizon was going to happen, and it never did. And unfortunately, we're a small community, and people ignore small communities, so especially large corporations, because it's not worth their bottom dollar. So I guess my, my interpretation was different when I read through the Co-Mall Group proposal, their ability to audit and to see if we're actually getting what we should be getting. And the fact that most of the time they find that most uh, agencies are receiving significantly less than what they should by contract. So that's what persuaded me to actually say, I, I think we need to give this a try because we may be getting less. There's a higher chance we may be getting less than we are, you know, due upon the services. So as a clarifying point on that, Irene, if they audited that and found that we have been shorted in previous years, because that is contractually obligated, that is something that we could pursue as a a reimbursement from Comcast. Yeah. Um, that was my perspective on it. I, I don't like to spend money. I, I really don't. But I, I, again, forward thinking, I agree with Jim, things do change. But at the same time, we have to look to see what we can do to protect the township and, and our residents' interests. And, and this certainly is a big chunk of change. So... Colin, you're leaning forward. Do you have any kind of input here? I was just going to say that that the negotiation of this agreement concerns somewhat complex federal telecommunications law. So the Cohen Law Group is a boutique firm outside of Pittsburgh, which specializes in this area of the law. Um, they keep up to date and abreast with changes in this area and the evolving regulations. And so Part of the township's benefit in potentially retaining the Cohen Law Group is that his firm will be able to potentially build into the contract and negotiate items therein that may uh, result in increased fees to, to Marion. So that you know, outside of the audit, you're also paying for hopefully the Cohen Law Group negotiating additional service fees on behalf of the township it's more like anticipated and unforeseen uh things that may come our way that we can even think of so like as jim mentioned before new changes in technology that may be similar to what is going on now that may be uh be able to enhance a customer's perspective but that we would basically get a piece of that pie too so right so if the if the if the law you know or i should say the law is updated to allow municipalities to get more fees, then Cohen can build that fee into the agreement, which quite frankly, Kozlov's doubt wouldn't know about. Right. Have you had any experience with anyone else using that particular group as far as uh, feedback? We we refer Cohen to most of our municipal okay. clients throughout Berks County. And they some, a positive response from them? You, you overall, yes. Yep. Some, some of the smaller municipalities that we represent don't use Cohen because of the, the cost. cost, but a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, the, the, the purpose is for Cohen to identify um, updates in the law that allow it to get, allow the township to get fees that otherwise wouldn't be built into the contract. Because if you just renew the contract you had 10 years ago, 
then you may be missing out on some of the fees that the law now allows the township to grab through Comcast. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your input on that. You get a flat 5%. Have you had any municipalities get a higher percentage? So the 5% is capped by federal law. Um, but they, he negotiates some of the definition. So yeah. it's 5% of A, B, and C when it could be 5% of A, B, C, and D. Yeah. yeah, so Jim, as an example, right now we might be getting uh, re uh, fees associated with the internet service and with basic cable, but we may not be getting things with like the streaming platform or HBO subscriptions or you know, any of the other things that get layered on on top of that, that we may be getting a very small piece of that. And we don't even know necessarily what we can ask for to expand that pie. They sent us a, uh, or Sue sent it out. From Eric Wilson. What we're, what we're actually getting no, paid that, on. No, that was on there. Yeah. They sent us that. And I think everything was on there, Peter. I think streaming and everything was on there, wasn't it? I, I don't know that working. Well, that's that's the thing is they may have multiple things, multiple names for the same package or similar names for the same package. So we may see like, oh, we get stream picks or whatever that Comcast has, but they may have multiple tiers of that that we don't even know about. Like there may be multiple offerings of very similar sounding products. Okay. I wouldn't be opposed to sitting down and discussing with Comcast, but I'd, I'd like it to be fully understood that they're, even with me being in technology, this is a very, very... Uh, niche uh, thing that we're looking at, that it's a little outside of my wheelhouse because of the complicated laws that go along with it. I guess I'm, I'm of the mind, just as much as we put our faith in Chuck with giving us advice about all the engineering things, because none of us are engineer, none of us are specialists when it comes to this type of law. And I have to put my faith and trust in this group that they're going to work because we are their client once we sign an agreement, that they're going to work to the best to assist us in our ability. So, so the township hasn't used Cohen Law Group in the past, right? No. No. I, I would always say that if, if the township isn't satisfied with the negotiation and the additional fees, that it would get as a result of Cohen's involvement, and obviously in ten years it doesn't have to use them again. Right. Um, over ten years, it's it's eighteen hundred dollars a month or eighteen hundred dollars a year annually. You would hope that you know the law group is going to negotiate to cover that cost per year. Yeah, it's it's only about nine hundred dollars annually. Right. Yeah. Right. Nine hundred. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. All right, well, I will reluctantly agree with you, but... Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't, so you can, you don't have yeah. to. I, I, I prefer yeah. that we're all kind of on the same page, but um, yeah. there's there's no nothing wrong with having a, a differing opinion. Right. Um, so, so, Irene, do we, do we want to yeah. authorize the uh, engagement with Cohen? I would say yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to all, uh, sign the engagement letter for Cohen Law Group around the renegotiation of the Comcast franchise. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Reluctantly, aye. <laughs> but this is this, but this is what it's about, and and we like to have the discussions, and I think it makes a difference because it's made me rethink a lot of things. So. So do you still have that? I, ha I think I have it in mind. Well, we have it somewhere on the computer, but yeah, yeah. what? The the, the agreements, because I think it was specifically yeah, addressed how to break it. Yeah. Perfect. Is it right. something that we won't need to sign, or is it just one of us? That's okay. Probably just the chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eventually. It's okay. It's yeah. okay, Sue. Thank you, though. Probably all the chairman. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you leave that out, I can I can swing through and there's nobody there and sign it. It's just what signatures? Yeah. Right? We right. shall leave it out for you. Okay. Thank you much. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendment, Section 403. This is the one pertaining to the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. At last month's meeting, we made a motion to present this to the Western Berks Joint Zoning. 
uh, for their planning commission. Uh, Andy was going to be taking care of this. Um, Colin, I'm not sure if there's any update on that. Okay. I missed that when he said that to Nicole. Okay, so I do I do have a letter in front of me uh, representing that uh, Attorney George did send the proposed zoning ordinance amendment to the Western Berks Joint Planning Commission. Okay, so we just have to that wait was, to hear back from, from their Planning Commission review? That was done on November 3rd. Do you, Peter, do you know when the Planning Commission meetings are held? Mm -hmm. No. Are they, are they every other month? It's every other, but I don't know when. Okay. So I I suspect that the planning commission hasn't held a meeting since we submitted this amendment, but I'll double check with Attorney George. I think they only meet as needed. They only meet as needed. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll wait to hear back on that. Uh, next is the building property reno uh, renovations uh, or new building. Uh, we've got, we've got some updates uh, from uh, I'll, I guess I'll turn it over to Chuck, uh, who was there looking at the second floor on the uh, outside garage wall, uh, along with Tom Unger from Systems Design Engineering. Um, there was a little bit of excitement there, so uh, Chuck, I'll, I'll let you recap if you would. Well, I don't know about excitement, but uh, yeah. all I can say is when we do an evaluation, we do it thoroughly, and uh, <laughs> we try and find. Um, you know, all the areas of concern. Um, so just for the benefit of the audience, um, it was identified that the uh, northwest wall here at the township building, uh, it's a brick wall. It appears to be um, bowing a little bit as evident by some, some cracking that's developed in the interior of the building um, along the walls and floor of the second uh, story. Um, so that being said, um, Myself and Tom Unger from my office, um, both of us have some structural background. Um, you know, we're here and we're trying to evaluate, um, you know, what's going on, what's causing that situation to occur. That portion of the building, as I understand it, was the original school building um, built in the 1870s. Mm -hmm. Right. Something. Yeah. And <laughs> at some point after the township took possession of the building, um, the, the two garage doors were installed uh, to allow uh, township equipment to be stored inside. So when that was done, it looks like there was a brick column, original brick column that was uh, replaced with something much narrower. And of course, uh, a lintel beam was installed. Um, over top of the garage uh, openings, the garage door openings. But we can't see what those members are. Um, we're not sure what connections were made between uh, those structural components and the brick wall itself or the internal um, floor framing. So, you know, working with an old building like this is honestly a little out of, out of my area. Uh, experience and expertise and the same with Tom. So I'm going to suggest to the board um, that I get a specialty contractor um, to simply come out and aid in further evaluation of this situation and help with um, the estimation of some um, costs that might be incurred on two fronts. One, I think we we want to simply um, make sure the wall is, is stabilized and, and nothing moves any further um, or cracking doesn't uh, get too severe. Um, and then ultimately, you know, uh, an estimate of what it might take to do a full complete repair. Um, you know, any contractor I get to come out, you know, there wouldn't be any charge for their time and for you know, them to just... Uh, help with the evaluation on the conditions and the uh, potential costs for repairing. Um, you know, I know that there's a goal here in the township to possibly you know, work on a new uh, building on a new site. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to spend um, an exuberant amount of money. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what that level of involvement is, but 
you know, with the with the cracks that are on the exterior of the wall and some of the deteriorated mortar and the northwest face of that wall, taking the majority of our weather systems that come this way, it's easy to see how uh, wind-driven precipitation is entering the building. And I understand up until a few years ago, the roof uh, wasn't as best as it could be. It was since replaced, so there, there's uh, the probability of some some water damage. And I can attest that there is some water damage up there uh, <laughs> firsthand um, because there are some uh, or there, there were some floorboards there that were um, you know, damp um, and rotted uh, pretty severely. I'm sorry. Um, uh, the, the floor joists in behind are also showing, you know, some moisture uh, content. Um, so, you know, we water's water's the worst enemy of a building. Um, I've I've for about twenty four years I I worked on a lot of parking garage restoration projects, structural work, and water and salt that's carried in from vehicles is is the number one killer <laughs> of structures so so you're constantly um, you know fighting a battle to, to keep water out so you know i think in the short term we might have some recommendations to simply try and seal up some of those cracks um the concern becomes you know over winter uh, doing mortar work and repointing is not ideal because you because you need some you need minimum temperatures so it gets costly because you would be in that's an exterior wall we would have to encapsulate that area and provide some heat to allow the mortar to properly cure we wouldn't want it to freeze overnight uh, which would compromise it um and and then there's some other thoughts too of how we might be able to accomplish that but um we don't want to we don't want to put anything into it that we would have to tear out again if, if need be um so we want to take a real practical cost conscientious approach to whatever is done there um and at the same time you know we want to make sure that it's stabilized um we don't see any signs of it really moving and i think the cracks have been there for quite some time um so i don't think there's any imminent danger um, but we really, you know, we're not a hundred percent sure of that because a lot of the structural members are hidden behind walls or within walls, behind plaster, what have you. So when we do come out to do a little further evaluation with contractor, we may ask, uh, Butch to remove some of the, uh, wood trim boards really that are covering up some of those areas and, and specifically around that, that column between the two garage doors and possibly that lintel beam above. Um, so we can see how uh, things were tied back into the structure because we're not seeing anything through the cracks in the walls on the uh, interior uh, on the second floor. So um, it's good that we're looking at it. Um, you know, something needs to be done there. And so we'll just keep you posted. And if the board's okay with me proceeding with uh, scheduling to get a contractor here out in the short term, maybe, maybe before the next board meeting um if i if possible we're coming up to the holidays yeah. hunting season contractors like to disappear for some reason um but i will do everything i can to try and keep this moving because um because of the onset of winter winter conditions and we, we want to make sure you know as we go through winter and, and and precipitation events and freeze thaw cycles that's when you can really start to see things really ratchet themselves apart with borders getting in there um so we'll have some better ideas for, for the board to consider at the next meeting. I think everybody knows my opinion that we, every dime we put into this building is money that is not well spent. Yeah. This building has had its day. Uh, I think we need to contact every owner of property in this township that has 10 acres to see if they would be willing to, to part with some of that soon. I don't know. You probably have a better understanding of everybody that has well, that kind of way. A lot of the a lot of the land is in ag security, and you can't build on it. Not all of it is, but a lot of it is. So yeah, Jim, we I agree with you. We we got to do something to make sure that the building doesn't fall down on our heads. But with that said, it should be, and and I hate to say this, but it should very much be a band aid. We shouldn't go out out of our way to try to fix 
the problem. Just make sure that it stays stable for the time being and turn our attention we just, at. We just discussed with Irene earlier, the only other alternative to not finding the acreage that, that we feel we need would be to tear this building down and rebuild in the same location. Mm -hmm. And, that, you know, we have the underground tanks that Irene just brought up to me. We have probably not really the amount of property that we'd love to have to be able to build. But if we can't find a piece of property that's adequate, that's the only alternative we're going to have because this building's going to fall down before <laughs> before too yeah. long anyway. I mean, is that even an option? Demolish this location and rebuild? Not in the deed. Yeah. Oh, you have you have deed restrictions or something? Sean, but not that's not listed. Yeah, well, we've we talked about having Andy discuss that with the school district anyway, and with mm -hmm. the county and whoever else yeah. has to be involved about that's that question over to Andy. Did we? I didn't. So, um, if you could take a look at the deed. So, sure. The deed restriction. Is there, the restriction on the deed is that the sale of the property that the property reverts back to the Conrad Weiser School District. Say that one more. Say that one more time. The sale of the property, the property would revert back to the Conrad Weiser School District. Uh, so, yeah. So, so that's a little bit of an issue, I think, as far as sale. Although things like that can be overcome. And that was fifty-one um, years ago. But that was. Wow. Yeah, it was 1970. So I would, I would assume at this point. That a quick phone call to their solicitor in the discussion would be, we don't want that property back. <laughs> right. Maybe. So I would think that it would be very simple for right. us to switch that deed around a little bit and make Wait. it we, we don't more know. attainable. Okay, we don't know until that question is asked. So we're asking you to ask the question that if, if in fact, this building were to go up for sale, how would we proceed because of that particular restriction on the deed? So it, it's a little bit unusual considering the large campus that the Conrad Weiser School District currently has. It's consolidated other than for the elementary schools, the middle school and the high school are on the same ground. So All right, but getting back to Chuck's question, if yeah. the township demolished this building and built a new one on the same ground, then obviously it wouldn't be changing ownership. And I would think it'd be and, fine. Yeah, I think it'd be right. cost ramifications for the demolition. Okay. Um, now, uh, in addition, four not, sticks of dynamite no. <laughs> yeah. properly placed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the only other concern I would have, and maybe something that would need to be researched, is to make sure this isn't on any historical present. No, it's, it's, it's not. not. Like it's not. That was checked out before. Yeah, it's not. There's not because there's yeah. nothing of a historic historical time frame. Like nothing mm -hmm. significant happens here. George um, Washington never did. No, no, and, here. and I, I know that. The village is in the in a historic district, mm -hmm. but this is not a registered historic okay. building. Right. Yeah, and right. um, because if there was, there would be funding to right. have maintained it and kept it in its original condition. But there, there's nothing because I looked at that year one, and there's no one uh, from there's no one that graduated from this school of any significant historical. I don't want to say value, but other than well, I know a few. You I'm just gonna throw that yeah, out. There. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm throwing out a few. Unfortunately, we don't have a big celebrity that graduated from here to see, or someone that had a um how do I put it politely, major impact in history themselves that that other than Sue. Um that uh, graduated from here. So so yeah, I think I, I contacted I think the local historical society. And I looked up everything on the national level, and because we, we have no requirements, you know, so I, I guess maybe again that's re exploring that. We have a I, there's a copy of the deed that's on Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, that's on the main website, so we have a dimension of this property. So yes. it, it, it's it's size. I mean, we, we need more garage space, we don't have really enough place for all of our trucks. Um, you know, a one-story building would be ideal mm -hmm. if we need to construct a second story just for, for storage purposes. Um, but we would like a larger meeting room. We mm -hmm. want to have it as an evacuation center. We want to have it more as a community facility where people can rent a hall and rent a meeting room, essentially, as a hall, essentially. Ideally, we were hoping to be able to have 100-person capacity because what is this, about 30 seats at max? I mean, there's a maximum capacity for this room. So... Yeah, yeah, plus us up here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, our, the, I only walked into the men's bathroom when we had a contractor come through, and I did not know there was a shower curtain in there, for God's sakes. You know, what is going on? 
But I mean, we, we, we don't have the facilities that we need to. We don't have a sprinkler system. We don't have an IOR station. We don't have a hazmat shower. We don't have things that you would normally associate with a functioning building. So, um, it, so there's so much to put into it. Again, I'm, I'm relying on you to give me feedback, something that may go on a different property, but it now having this discussion here, something that would go maybe even on this property if we were to demolish it. I mean, I think Butch would appreciate at least three of uh, a garage bays, but double bays. And I know our emergency management coordinator wants to see if he could get equipment donated. That would involve like a fourth bay. I don't think this property has a capacity for four bays. We wouldn't necessarily need um, the garage linked to the building. It could be two That's separate right. buildings. So it it, it really should be separated. Yeah. Going to put a garage over on the one corner of the playground? Yeah, could could some of the playground property be used for garage purposes? Is that something that's feasible, or that's? I mean, if we can't find a piece of property, we're stuck. Right. And then the playground itself can be reconfigured and 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 redone because we're we're missing a lot of ADA compliance. There's a lot of stuff that that needs to be worked on. So maybe it is revisiting, looking at this property through a fresh set of eyes, through Chuck's eyes, and saying, "Hey, what can we do with what we have?" You know. Having to demolish the building, obviously, we'd have to find a temporary residence somewhere for at least operating the functioning of uh, the office, as Sue says, the trailer. Um, but at the same time, in order to hold public meetings, we would have to essentially say, hey, can we use your building for these public meetings? Mm -hmm. I'm sure other townships or even possibly the schools would host us. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, there's a lot to consider here. So, well, um, I'm working with another municipality on a new. Um, office for them. They're currently located in the local library mm -hmm. because although their building was in fine condition, they wanted to take advantage of the market and, and actually auction it off early in this this uh, summer. Yeah. Um, which I thought was, a, was was an interesting approach without having a new home to go to. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what I'm what I'm waiting for uh, is really uh, some programming of all the things you just mentioned, you know, community room, um, gathering area, uh, the number of garages and that type of thing. And with that information, we can start working at least on a nice rectangle that all those components okay. fit in, okay, to get a size of the building and to determine, you know, how much parking and lay down area you would need for your, for your uh, public works operations and garages and what have you to help identify what kind of lot size you do need. Maybe you don't need 10 acres, okay. you know? Well, the only reason we were talking about 10 acres is to have the acreage for a park. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I get that. And, yeah. and, and with that done, we can also then kind of look and see would that all fit on this property okay. to evaluate the demolition aspect. Um, you know, the only thing I, you know, there's going to be demolition costs, but of course, if you go on another site, you're going to have the purchase price of the raw land. Right. Um, so, yeah, you have to. And you're going to have to make all this to count. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great farm. It's so fun. Um, so, I, 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 like, trying to think about some of the stuff you just threw at us. So, like, Sue and I think would like to give you, like, feedback over. Like what an office concept would be, like just the nuts and bolts of, of how an office should be set up and an entry point. Peter would probably have a little bit of an input over another aspect of the building. I know John, as the emergency management coordinator, can give you a little bit of feedback. Are you okay if we all kind of give you send you an email? Okay, yeah. hey, these are the yeah, I think so, and then I would compile that information. Okay. Now, yeah. um, be very similar to the one you're already working. It could be, yeah. And, and and here's what I'll offer to do: I will send you some examples of other okay. municipal office buildings uh, that we've done to give you a start, because that's what I did with this with this oh, other yeah. borough, and we built upon that. Then it okay. gave them a starting point, um, because there's you know there's a lot of questions you need to ask. You know, how many offices do you want to have? Mm -hmm. Private offices, storage facilities, you know, mm -hmm. room for computers, what have you. Um, but, but you're going on a whole nother level with right. um, a much, much larger space, I believe, for the evacuation center. Well, is that the term you use? Have it as a collection point, evacuation point, because there's nothing really here. Yeah, regionally. Yeah, there's nothing on the, in the 
uh, I think, adjacent county either. So I've been trying to work with emergency management coordinators and getting the data and information because unfortunately, weather's getting more severe. There's there's a lot more events. We're prone to flooding in this area. And so there's not really any place for our residents to go. There, is there an active church in our, in our community? What's the closest church here? That's oh, fine. There's one at that end. There's How big are they? What? How large are they? Large. They, so they could handle that. Large. Large. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I don't know how much they're willing to participate with a evacuation event. So we, we're here, we would be part of it because of our emergency management coordinator, and we would be able to have the resources at the building, obviously, to, to manage this, the scenario. So the other thing, it opens us up to a little bit more as far as grants, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, that's, that's part of that concept there, too. And unfortunately, within the past two years, we've had a couple of local incidents that required a command center being set up. It was set up at the park. Uh, and, and, you know, so it just expressed, it, 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 it just showed me the need for it, along with our emergency management coordinator, who's my husband, um, has also been going through the team and FEMA classes too. And he is just beside himself. So like tonight, he handed me a whole bunch of resolutions that were passed in 2004 that should have been adopted by the township, which probably have not been. So um, there's a lot of, of bringing us up to speed again about things that need to be addressed that have been neglected for so long, like the building. So like Peter, you know, we've been handed kind of this raw deal since we came on the board about so many things that were neglected and the building is, is number one. You know, we were hoping to, I don't want to say ignore it, but put it on the back burner, but we've fallen through the floor and we can't. So, okay. I'm sorry, fair phrase. I'm here, okay. So, um, all right. So, so you're going to pass along some concepts that you have. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to take a look at and say, we think this meets the needs. We want to anticipate not just what our immediate needs are, what our individual needs, but we want to kind of have that foresight to say what may be needed in the future. Yeah, what room to grow? Right, right. Or add stand yeah. or equipment, garage. Yeah. I don't know. I right, don't know. Exactly, exactly. Salt sheds, yeah. things of those nature yeah. that would help with your operations. And I guess, you know, reassessing with what property we have, even bringing in that concept of redoing the park and bringing that park up to speed and really, you know, giving that the, the robust improvements that it needs, all the ADA compliance access, et cetera, keeping it within a walkable community is something that we would definitely be very interested in. And so I guess we're gonna look at it through a different set of eyes. So yeah. you know, uh, my sender getting outside. We we had to knock that apart before we yeah. Yeah. And I said it. And we know we know we need a salt shed because of the problem that we had with the, the salt storage uh, was it last year, two years ago? It was two years you ago. Know? We had to yeah. sweet talk to Alba Hawken into uh, storing salt for us. Yeah. So so there's there's lots of issues. But at least you plan for it. Yeah. You, know, you may not have to build everything initially, yeah. but you have it you know, planned yeah. for. And you take it on as funding becomes available or grants or what have you. Um, this is only property we own, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I checked the unclaimed funds in there as there was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were planning on keeping the building in Rodney Seven. The first thing I would do is to try to buy this piece of land right next door here. Because you have a big inspection. She's mm -hmm. a some years old. Well, she's still living, though. She's not dead yet. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. yeah. Like, you know, maybe if her home could remain. Right. She can make some type of condition with her. That you're buying it now, and she can live there for yep. the rest of her life. She has a life estate, so. So you can, yeah. yeah. So if you're out, of, and that would be another way coming in here because we were out, of, and it's going to give you the whole length of our life right against the end. Yeah, so there's there's a lot to. Uh, That's cheaper to buy it today or someplace else. Yeah. yeah. A lot cheaper. The, the only thing I think would be interesting is is the deed and and or whether the school district after 51 years would want this property back because it's really would be a liability to the school yeah. district. Yeah. So they might just sign off because you know maybe there is some va sale value here to somebody that would want to come in and um, put the money and effort into restoring it yeah. and creating I don't know what you know it could be uh, there's so much, there's a lot of options here. If you have the time and, and the money. desire yeah. um, to do something. I don't know. I get a little sentimental in old buildings. 
Yeah, you know, we we all do. We all we all do. Um, but you know, it's it's sad how neglected this place has been and how much it's gonna cost. How much it's been costing just to band it. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable. But if the school district will let you out of that caveat, yeah, there's some value here that could go towards your new site if that's the direction yeah. you want to go. Yeah, yeah. no, we're 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 up for anything. Anything. Mm -hmm. You could send us some plans. Yep, at least yep. we'll be going in the right direction. We have this building is free and clear. There's nothing on this building. Free but grants, grants, I think grants, grants are like improvements. Oh, grants. No, no one's going to give us any money. Yeah. Um, what here? I was told you like this, so I work for them. We've got grants to maintain this and put the floor in. Now, there's nothing I, around I, it. I have looked and, looked and looked and looked and looked. If you rush the town, they didn't win. They rushed the town. They got charged and made no. four and a half million dollars. No. Because they left the town without yeah. permission. Uh, no. there's, there's there's nothing on this building. Nothing here. Yeah. Irene. Oh, I've looked uh, what's the all, all the websites. I've looked at them over and over and over again. Because we tried going the historical building route and, and it just doesn't meet any criteria. Yeah, yeah Lee, I, I looked some of the other avenues, I know Irene went down a lot, but I looked at like energy efficiency things and things around the windows and stuff like that. And we're just, we're simply not eligible. There's not a huge number that are out there and any of the ones that are, we're not eligible for. And the windows alone on the building is probably uh, close to 60 to $80,000 just, just in the windows alone. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some of the numbers that I've collected. I think I think those estimates were kind of well. They were last year's prices. Well, so we, that one estimate we got was fifty-four thousand dollars. Yeah, these yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Like the yeah, yeah. just the windows in this room. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming into winter time. Yeah, our heating bill here for one room will be yeah. close to a thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean the whole. Heater, but yeah, but, but we, we lose so much heat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I guess to, to sum it up, Chuck's going to provide us with some additional information. He's going to get us a contractor just to give us an idea what we could do to remedy this this problem. Because it's not just a, uh, we have to worry about an imminent failure on the wall, but it's also it was at the request of our insurance agent. So we have to remedy this this particular problem. We're gonna band-aid it and move on from there. And Chuck's gonna give us some more concept ideas for a potential new building, whether it's on this property or another property. So I hate to say it, I think I like the idea of being on this property. Yeah. You said yeah. And think about hey, uh, here this building, uh, you ought to get a price uh, from somebody to see what what it would cost the the not this building, not. Did you guys do it with one of the vehicles? What are you talking about? <laughs> four sticks of dynamite. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Jim already volunteered. Four sticks, four I'll build one on each corner. It'll go. <laughs> but also, you know, I, I guess there are materials that could be salvaged from yeah. the building, yeah. too. And that's how you would yeah. salvage. Yeah. Yeah. Get the so salvage, right? Salvage. Yeah. 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 So it'd be an interesting process, and then Sue and I will live in a trailer. <laughs> as long as there's a bathroom. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I, you think we're okay to move on to the next item? Uh, I think we're okay to move on to the next item, which is the park hours. The Marion Township Community Association would like to have ice skating on the multi-purpose court in the evenings. Our insurance requires uh, skating during park hours. Our park currently closes after dusk, the hours being from dawn till dusk. Um, if we changed the hours, we'd obviously have to change the sign. Um, Irene, did you happen to make contact with the insurance group to see if if we're maybe exhausting a loophole here, if they'd be okay with the... I sent an email after the meeting on yeah. Saturday. Did we get anything back yet? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, they, said, yeah. They, said they, did. they said they didn't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's no okay. increase, in, yeah. no increase yeah, at all. That's, okay. that's, so that's easy then. So, so we uh, have to put new signs up anyway, Peter. So just yeah. we'll change the signage. Or do we want to do like eight a.m. to eight p.m. for the park hours rather than dawn till dusk? Or um, what do you guys prefer? Is eight p.m. sufficient enough, or is or is nine p.m. Uh, 
Nine. Go to nine. nine, and in the in the summertime, dusk to dawn is after nine. nine. Yeah. So. Yeah. So do we well, just so that I, I know the signage to order? Do we want to say like seven a.m. to nine p.m. for the park hours, or yes, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's great. perfect. Okay, perfect. seven a.m. nine p.m. And then Irene, I may give you a call uh, early part of next week about some of the other specifics to make sure that I'm ordering all of the right signage with all the right wording on it for what the insurance company asked for. Uh, but we'll we'll get that ordered, and then I guess. Um, Colin, with that being signage, do we have to like uh, a motion for it? But is there anything with uh, the sign placement that has to be legally done for the park, changing the hours? Peter, can you ask that question one more time? Chuck and I were discussing another issue. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. So the question was with us changing the park hours, other than a motion, is there anything that we have to do to set the new the new park hours and place the signage? No, no, no. Okay. But. but the board might want to consider having the MTCA get their own insurance policy if they're hosting these skating events at or on township property. What what is the MTCA? It's, uh, it's the, the community association. Mary Township Community Association. Okay, so it's a it's an internal yeah, volunteer they're, effort they're or it's not an outside agency right? well they, they technically are an outside agency they're a 5013c they're a charity it's not a record, oh, okay. it's not a record. It's but they're like peter aren't they covered under our insurance they, they are yeah. yes oh, they're, they're, uh, named, they're named as they're named as an additional they, insurance yes, correct. Yes. Okay. They, don't correct. Need, they don't need to do anything okay yeah so so in that in that case the board would only need to make a motion to change the hours at its discretion Okay. okay, so uh, the other question is, with this being on the agenda, the cost of the signage, do we need to amend the agenda, seeing as it is a dollar figure, or is the, the fact that we have park hours as an agenda item uh, sufficient to meet the new uh, Sunshine Law Acts around agenda posting? If, if the board is spending money on a new sign, then yes, you will want to amend the agenda to include that line item and then take a vote on that line item as well. Okay. I'm not sure what the cost of the signs will be, but um but didn't we discuss the signs at the workshop meeting? Well the signs for the rink for the skating uh, rink not the sign discussed yeah. not the sign changing the park. There's a sign out at the alley here that has the park hours on it. Gotcha. Playground hours. That's the sign I meant. That's why I put that on here. Okay. So the we, we can says Marion Town. What I don't even know what it says. Like yeah. So it's so Colin. No, it's gonna be longer than two weeks, isn't it? Oh it's yeah, nobody Colin. It oh, all winter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Colin, procedurally, would it be okay if we obviously authorize the change in the park hours now? I can work on getting the signs uh costed and ordered for the next meeting, and then we authorize it at the workshop meeting. Absolutely. Okay, I think that's our, our best bet. I can kind of keep that running in tandem, uh, and then we can just ratify it at the next meeting and place the order. Yep, yep. Okay, so I, I will make a motion to amend the Marion uh, Park hours to now be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, and then, like I said, uh, I'll be in contact with you, Irene, to make sure that we get the right wording on the signs. I'll get that laid out, and I'll send that over to MSI. They can give me a, a cost on that. Take a picture of the sign we have, Peter. It's just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's specific things for, like, the skating rink that we need to include um, that we, we will have to post. It's not just going to be a direct replacement oh, of that. Well, I thought you were going to do separate signs for the we, skating rink. Yeah. We are, but I'm, I'm going to order all the signs at once. Yeah. Okay. So next yeah. month we we'll need to put purchase signs. Yes. Cover everything. Yeah. Okay. Did you purchase poles for those speed signs yet? Um, not yet. So Butch got some prices around the speed signs, which is actually I think the not the next item, but the the one after that. So let's jump ahead to to item thirteen. Uh, or actually, no, I apologize. It's not thirteen. Um, okay. Okay, so so for the speed signs, I had gotten some pricing for um, a, a ten foot two and three eighths pole that was considerably cheaper than than what Butch had gotten. 
the thickness is is considerably thinner. So I'm going to try to find a comparative uh, thickness, something that meets Schedule 40. Um, otherwise, the butch, keep me honest, the ones that you had gotten were several hundred dollars for uh, the two two poles. Yeah, they were like 240 some dollars, I think, for, for, for two poles. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is. Yeah. We, we need to get those signs up. Well, they've been sitting here now for what, two months or more? Probably uh, we just started together. Uh, yeah so so jim my my recommendation is if we don't have uh, a good alternative or a, a competing price by next month's meeting we move forward on buying the ones from binkley and hearst if i can find it at a, a better supplier we'll move forward on that um but it's it's a considerable amount of money, and once we put these things in, they're they're not moving. Especially if we put them along Main Street, where we have to do anything with the the sidewalk or curbing. There, once they're in, they're in. So we want to make sure that we get the right thing and uh, that it's it's placed for good. I thought I thought we were not on the um, side and post and stuff, but they told me on Main Street that that is on strong. Yeah, they're 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 nice signs. We got very nice signs, but the the kind of the counterpoint to them being very nice is they're very large and very heavy. So uh, we need to make sure that we mount them to something that isn't going to uh, easily walk away or fall over. So, I wonder if the company we bought those from has no, no. <laughs> they probably just do the signs. They have one mark. They had a buyer. They have a, such a sign down at their shop, and they had a full on tie. Well, wait. What, what is the sign? If they're two forty. They're two forty. It's just it's we need to get them up. So when you drive by, oh, the, the, okay. But it's it's a Pullman's. Because they're usually pretty small, and they can attach yeah. to them. Oh no, this they're big. They're big. A lot of big ones. Three by three. Yeah. Okay, so we'll uh we'll have that. Uh, Sue, if you can put that on next month's agenda, one way or the other, we will buy poles and mounting hardware for the speed signs. Yep, I'll put it on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. But the modding itself is with the sign. But I need the post. Did, did the manufacturer provide you with the specification for the post? No. They did not. I don't think so. Yeah. I can look on the paper, but I don't think so. He doesn't say there should be a white sheet that came with there's the a, sign that says. <clears throat> what you call it. There's a piece of plastic that has a. It has like a. Indentation and I can put it on the pole. Okay. 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 You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Recess. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's sized a certain way. Yeah, it's like the mounting is like there are two of that. And then it, I guess I, I guess I might, I'd be curious to reach out to the manufacturer. I don't know. I'm always looking so, I don't remember if I asked this question before, but uh, I know those signs oftentimes are mounted to poles. No. Um, this is uh, Chuck. If if you can hear me, um, would this maybe be worthwhile to ask, uh, like Med Ed, if we can get permission to attach it to poles? I know normally you can't do that unless you get their their express approval. Yeah, I mean that 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 would be a good option too, as long as the poles in an appropriate location where you want where you want to monitor the speed. And Butch is shaking his head no. <laughs> um, I, I'd also be curious as to what post the manufacturer recommends uh, for these signs. Because, I, uh, again, I'm not familiar with the model you have, but I have seen you other ones that local them. police departments use, and they move them around to different areas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, our, our big concern is uh, these Main are Street. These are portable, portable that they, they mount on regular the signpost channels. Oh. Um, so that's why I'm surprised to hear that this is more of a permanent installation 
on a pretty heavy duty hole. Yeah, Chuck, they're actually over in the other room, or they were sitting out over in the other room before before you leave. If, um, it's, locked, it's, locked, it's locked right now. Yeah, it, yeah. After the meeting, if somebody can show you that, I think you'll you'll get a better understanding of what kind of what we're looking at. Okay. Next, All next right. time somebody hits a pole, go and get the two pieces, and we'll use. We'll use uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I've got have? a. I've actually got a pole in my yard. I can donate if somebody wants to come dig it out. Well, well you there know, you go. Where there. we could just use half on one and half on the other, Peter. <laughs> Well, and th and that's a concern because most you know the pen dot standard now is your sign post have to have a breakaway base. Well, so if a car hits it, yeah, if you're putting something in pretty substantial, mm -hmm. you might be concerned that you might be creating somewhat of a hazard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. So, <laughs> all right, that certainly isn't going to break away, and therefore. <laughs> could be perceived as a somewhat of a yeah we'll look at it mm. all right peter ready to move okay on? yeah next item on the agenda is the emergency management coordinator equipment i will turn it over to you irene for the the synopsis of things that you got from john so john actually made a request for three particular items one was the digital village dji mavic air 2s flymore combo drone quadcopter for the sum of one thousand three hundred ninety five dollars the second item is an NRS Rapid Rescue Rescuer personal flotation device for $264.95. And the third item is for uh, these incident commander boards, and he gave us three different prices. Uh, the first price would be uh, a total of $1,478.80. Uh, another offer was for $2,095 plus shipping and handling. And the last one was for one thousand nine hundred fifty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. So um, he needs more than one uh, board for an operation. So the least of these uh, three in that particular category was for the one thousand four hundred seventy-eight dollars and eighty cents. So as I mentioned during the workshop um, uh, meeting, John has been attending all these classes. I think he's pretty much winding up. Uh, all the stuff that he needs to do to get all of his uh, certifications. Um, his intention is at some point to come to speak to the board or at least to provide another letter or even possibly a short video. Um, he would like to do training with multiple agencies around here, as well as our, our community fire departments so that there's more uh, emergency preparedness within the community. So uh, these at a minimum are, are some of the items that he needs along with his other big wish list, which, um, uh, we're going to work on as far as a, a grant submission down the road. So, doesn't John have a five thousand dollar budget? He does. He yeah. does. And this is so, uh, this is like three thousand one hundred forty nine. So, so I'm going to abstain from from any voting on this. Mm -hmm. So it's the first three items that he uh, is requesting. So I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to vote on that. Sure. Let me uh, let me throw open the calculator real quick so that I know what the total is. But uh, it's it's one hundred. Thirty-nine dollars, approximately. I rounded it up. Okay. So I, I just threw it in the calculator real quick. If we're going the the no, option number three is the one thousand four hundred and seventy-eight dollars and eighty cents. Uh, the first three items come to three thousand one hundred and thirty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Right. So this is well within his budget. Um on board with making a motion to authorize John to purchase the uh, the three bulleted items, the Air uh, Air 2S Fly More Combo Drone, the NRS Rapid Res Rescuer Personal Flotation Device, and the Atmospheric Checklist Board, um, uh, and all of the accompanying, I guess each one of those is a, a subboard, sure. Irene, like there's so many yeah. slashes on there. Um, all of the items uh, as listed in bullet point number three for a total of $3,138.75 plus any applicable tax and shipping. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, abstain. Jim. Aye. Okay. Did, uh, um, did John get any information yet on the pumps? That was actually... I was just about to ask that, Jim. Yeah, we've we've had a couple of curveballs within the past week, so 
we were actually planning on going out and, and doing that shopping within the next couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm hoping we're, if we should have that information by the next meeting and I'll be able to get student members. So hopefully it's something we could discuss at the workshop, approve of by the, the next meeting. Uh, just to give you an idea, like John wants to work on a scenario, let's say one of our culverts were to fail and uh, 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 you know there was a vehicle or a bus that happens to be going over that area and now this 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 bus is with children in it in, in a waterway so not wishing this upon us but but unfortunately this is a reality so that's a scenario that he wants to work on in this community which is a, a very big possibility and these are things that we just haven't prepared for yeah even things like the flooding response canal road if somebody tries to drive through the high water yeah. being able to react and respond to that because i'm sure there are a lot of people that drive drive through that and really shouldn't right, right. and so so he's he's very much into this in and he wants to make sure we are prepared okay as a follow-up statement for that colin could we maybe ask you or or andy as a takeaway uh to draft up some sort of uh, agreement that if we have these pump out tote these care package things um, when we give them out to people, that would be an acknowledgement that they are uh, loaned to them and that they are responsible for the cost of replacement or repair um, as a result of their, their operation or use of the, the, the pump and any other uh, accessories. Uh, also, uh, I guess a good one would be absolving us from any liability for damage through use of uh, or as a result of the, the pump out totes. Yes. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Okay, we don't have anything further on that. I'll move to the next item, which is the Tulpahawken Township Police Department Equipment and Grant Opportunities. Uh, we had received a, a rather nice letter from uh, Chief Dronick explaining some of the things that they're in dire need of. Um, I'll do a quick synopsis and then I'll turn it over to Irene. Um, they have a pretty heavy, heavy need for some equipment. Um, they are looking at trying to find uh, funding for another police vehicle. They need ballistic shields. They need tools. They need a, a, another computer for going in the the, the patrol cars. Um, they need portable radios. They need additional tasers. They need dash cameras. They need emergency lights. They need lettering done on on vehicles. They need lockers for police officers. Um, and all told, this this adds up very quickly to a very large amount of money that the the police department is is going to be underfunded for. Um, so after some discussion at the, the workshop meeting, we're, we're going to be assisting with grant lo locating grant opportunities. Um, and one of the, the more time sensitive things was the, uh, the dash or excuse me, the computers for the cruisers that's mounted to the dash. That's what they call an MDT. Uh, that totals about $6,000. We had tossed the idea around of, uh, reaching out to the other municipalities, the Tulpahawken services and seeing if that's something that we would be interested in contributing as a group uh, towards uh, supplying or furnishing for the, the police department. Um, Irene, is there anything you would want to add on top of that? I, I gave that a very quick synopsis over over the, the course of that letter. No, no, nothing further. I have to um, just get get the time to actually sit down and, and speak to uh, Tulpahawk and PD's secretary to see what other information I could gather from them. Um, to put together more information with regards to submitting information to Penn Strategies. I, I think, um, as, as I can tell you a lot, soon I learned with Hydroterra, the more information we're able to provide a grant writer, the easier it is for them to um, have the data and submit it. So the more homework we do, the better it is for us and the less work that they have to do on the other end so that it makes it a lot, uh, hopefully less costly to us when it comes to the grant. So. I'm trying to put together the data, and I apologize. I haven't had the time because of my regular job and some other um, minor emergencies as far as reaching out to both Tulpahawken Township as well as the, the um, uh, secretary at the at the police department itself. So, again, I want to be able to put together a narrative saying, hey, this is what we're looking for, and this is the communities that we serve, et cetera, and put together that narrative with some, some data, and that makes it a lot easier to uh, apply and get the the, the – the items that we need, you know, it's nice to ask, but it's better to have a nice story when you go to ask for those items. So, and, Absolutely. Then, and then thinking that again, we want to assist Tulpahawken police 
and, and that community, but we don't want to bear the brunt of the costs of any of the grants. We don't want to be able to front up. We, we want to be able to help with some of the grant costs, but not necessarily put up matching funds because of, of our contractual nature with the police department. So kind of figure out how we're going to work that when it comes to applying for grants too. And we'll probably need Colin's help with that. But we, we haven't gotten to that step yet. So I want to gather the data, put the information together, speak to Penn Strategies, unless there's another grant writing organization that someone else is familiar with and um, go forward from there. Okay. If we don't have anything further on that, the next item on the agenda is the fire extinguishers. Uh, we had received a quote from Jason Evans at Kistler O'Brien for five fire extinguishers complete with installation for $610.50. They will inspect them annually for a total of $82.50. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to approve the installation of the five fire extinguishers. Next item on the agenda is the Marlin Ray Martin Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. At the September Board of Supervisors meeting, a motion was made to reduce their letter of credit in an amount of $20,333.71. The secretary had a balance of $42,466.70, uh, but hadn't realized that there had been three auto increases, bringing that balance in total to $56,523.18. A motion was made at the workshop to ratify the correct amount on the letter to be released, which should have been $30,043.52, with a amount to be retained of $26,479.66. Um, moving to the next item, the PennDOT replacement of the culvert over Mill Creek in Tulpahocken Township. The project includes the culvert replacement and minor roadway reconstruction on the existing alignment. They will be sending us plans to display, and they invite public input for the project by accessing uh, the PennDOT.gov slash District 5 website. Uh, I will be putting that as one of the bulletin items on our website with a direct link that if you do want to place any public comments, uh, you would be able to do so through there. They will be doing a virtual plan display available for viewing from the 18th of November, being tomorrow, through December 2nd. Uh, they also have a survey that they would like us to complete, which uh, we can work on completing over the next couple of weeks and getting that turned back into them. Peter, they did send some um, of their, whatever they call them, virtual plans, whatever. They are, there's paper things here. Mm -hmm. Anybody can take them, complete the survey. Um, go on the website, complete the survey, whatever. But there are some here. This is Excellent. this is a bridge on 419. It's in Topahawken Township. Um, but um, a gentleman for the project contacted me and said the Topahawken Township recommended they contact us for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's probably just them being good neighbors. Is that that kind of connects to us? Yeah, that's why we got the stuff. Yeah, go okay. take it. There's 25. <laughs> Okay. Next item on the agenda is the terms that are expiring in January 2023. The first is Mervyn Brubaker on the Planning Commission. He has agreed that uh, he would be willing to se serve another term. We have David Weaver on the zoning hearing. He also has agreed to serve another term. Uh, Nancy Carrington for the vacancy board. Uh, she has since moved out of Marion Township, so we would need to find a replacement for the vacancy board. I um, find a replacement for that. Excellent. Um, who is uh, who's willing to step forth as the, the next vacancy board chairman? Uh, Christina Kirkend. Okay. Uh, I'll give Sewell her information. And these are appointed at reorg meeting. Yep. yep. Um, and John Seleski is the last one. Uh, the vacancy board chairman and the emergency management coordinator are one-year terms, and we reappoint every year. Um, John has also agreed to serve another term. So I think we're we're in good shape there. We have, unless somebody else comes forward as a an interested party for that vacancy board, we'll go with the the individual that uh, Irene located. Um, again, as I explained at the workshop meeting, the vacancy board chairman is not an exciting, glamorous position. Uh, they're only engaged if there's a vacancy on the board of supervisors, and the two remaining supervisors cannot reach a consensus on selecting uh, a new supervisor. Last item on the agenda is the proposed budget for 2023. At uh, last month's meeting, we made a motion to accept the proposed budget with a proposed millage of 2.75. Uh, 
a street light millage of 65 cents and a sewer levy, uh, the on-lot pump out inspection uh, with a, a total amount of $50. Um, just by the nature of how things transpired, we missed the 20 day advertising requirement by two days uh, to be able to adopt it at tonight's meeting. So we will have to adopt the budget at the December 2022 meeting. With that said, we'll move into comment. Um, we do not have the police report for October yet. So I, I will it's not. The, it's, it is in the packet. It oh, good. I typed this up. Okay, excellent. Uh, let, me, let me find that in the packet and. Okay, there it is. It was uh, right before the systems design engineering report. Okay, so it looks like the month of October was pretty quiet. They had 44 security checks, uh, no parking tickets, uh, no non-traffic citations. There were six traffic stops and tra six traffic citations issued, and they patrolled a total of 772 miles within our township, uh, which, as always, is impressive considering we only have about 34 or 36 miles of roadway. So that's a that's a lot of lot of circuits of the township. Yep. Um, I have no other comments. Irene, do you have anything that you'd like to bring forward? No, I'd just like to thank everyone for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Chuck, for all your input, and uh, thank you so much, Colin, for all your help on that letter. That was wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Jim, any comments for you? Uh, you have one here about MTCA. Kelly, is there anything you want to tell us about? Thank you. Peter, um, mm -hmm. back to the signage. Mm -hmm. I know there's certain things that the insurance is requesting to be on that signage. Just if MTCA could be involved with the draft of that um, yeah. prior to the Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Perfect. Uh, other than that, I have really... Nothing else to add. So, uh, Kelly, are you guys still selling Justino sandwich coupons? Um, yes, we are. Okay, so uh, I'll make the ob obligatory plug that they're they're delicious sandwiches and the money goes to a good cause. Uh, so anybody watching this, if you want to help support the MTCA and get a delicious meal out of it, uh, you can see Kelly or I'd imagine Don Hyde or Lee Dice or anybody that's in the community association about buying some coupons. Um, Colin. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that was Sunday, December eleventh at um what what was the time, Kelly? Six PM eighty five Main Street. Six PM eighty five Main Street. Okay, so just to reiterate because I I know I had a hard time hearing that. Uh there is going to be a tree lighting ceremony on December the eighteenth. December, December the eleventh, thank you. Uh at um 85 Main Street, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll make sure that that goes on the community calendar, Kelly, but uh, for the sake of possible dyslexia, uh, I may give you a call or a text message to make sure I don't switch any numbers around again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I'd imagine that's in the MTCA minutes too, correct? It is, and I think I sent an individual message to you also. Okay. Peter, uh, yes. Peter. I have a Kelly gave me a sign. Do you want me to scan that and send it to you? Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. The that's, only uh, other thing I wanted to add, Peter, was thank you to Butch for getting us ready for winter. It's coming. Yep. It's <laughs> it's I think already here. It's cold enough to be winter. We it's went from cold. like 70 yeah. degrees, 80 degrees down to about 40 overnight. So after after we have our Good. So we're ready. Well, <laughs> yeah, so we're at Good. The good man. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Colin, anything for you? I have nothing to report. Okay. Thank you. Chuck, anything for you? Um, I did provide a report for you. I don't think there's anything we didn't uh, touch on that we needed to. So I think we're good on that. 
I will comment though that the Lerda hearing was the most efficient and shortest hearing <laughs> I've ever attended in my career. So uh, congratulations to you on a, on a very efficient uh, hearing. Um, yeah, <laughs> quite shocked actually. There's nothing. There. Thank you, Sue. Anything for you? Uh, just happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, good point. Happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. If there's no other items for business, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.42 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting motion adjourned. carried. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay happy, and happy Thanksgiving. Can I ask a question?